Hello everyone. Today I have a fun treat for you guys. We are going to be unboxing some of Furl's newest hooks. They released some limited edition jumbo hooks, which of course I love my jumbo yarn. So I like to see what jumbo hooks are out there. Um, and we are going to be comparing them to the pink sheep design jumbo hooks. So these are our jumbo hooks that we make and sell. Um, and I've got a 20 and a 25 here because I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, that's the sizes that I bought. Um, so super, super excited. And yes, we are going to weigh it. I see you, yes. <laughs> so I actually have my handy dandy scale here. Um, so I know he said he wants me to weigh this now. So I'll weigh ours. Let me go ahead and weigh ours because that's the big thing. So one of the things that we really try to do with our hooks is make them lightweight because when you work with jumbo yarn, um, you're already dealing with heavy yarn. Your project is heavy. The yarn is heavy. So your hooks, if they're lightweight, that can help tremendously with, you know, pain and issues like that, cramping and all of those things that we try to avoid as crocheters. So uh, let's st start with our 20 millimeter and let's go to... The grams setting here. So our 20 millimeter hook is right around 32 grams. Okay. And then we've got our 25 millimeter hook, which is 46 grams. All right. So 32, 46, that's what we're looking at for these. Um, all right. Now I literally haven't opened this. I, I went ahead and cut it open. I have not looked at these yet. I really wanted this to be like a first, you know, a uh, first look with y'all. So I can give you my, my first thoughts. Let's see. And of course I taped it down so y'all could actually read that it was a furls box. Okay. So we've got our paper. And here are the hooks. I don't think there's anything else in here. Let's see. Nope, just paper. All right, so let's get that out of the way. All right, and we've got some more paper around the boxes. Okay, so obviously y'all know what it is. Jumbo hook. There we go. Let's see. Okay, jumbo hook. So you guys can see, I'll just show you guys the boxes. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but these are kind of a, um, it's an off-white color box. It says, hashtag I love my furls, lovingly made by hand in India and California. Okay. So let's see, does it have a size? It says, wait, open on other end. Okay, so I'll listen. It does not have a size on the outside, so I don't know which is going to be which. All right, so this is the 20. So you guys can see our 20 millimeter. All right. And you can see the top here. So y'all can see the way that this is. It's got a little bit of a point to it. Um, yeah, there you go. And it is like a pearlescent kind of look to it. Um, and it says these are resin is what the website says. So quite long. I've never been a huge fan of longer hooks. Um, you know, unless it's like a Tunisian hook for me, the extra length never helps me in any way. <laughs> so, um, you know, you'll notice immediately, uh, our hook is much, much shorter. So it's just enough room for me to have space for my stitches and hold my hook. I don't need all of the extra length. Uh, and let's go ahead and open the 25. I'm guessing it'll probably be the same length. Yeah. So these are... Same length here, you've got the 20 and the 25 S here. Okay, so I'll compare these two so you guys can see lengthwise, this is their 25 and our 25. And something that I noticed immediately for me is that this is so long that it's gonna take you, you're gonna have to push that hook even further through to get your stitches down to this section of the hook, which I've never been a huge fan of because I feel like it makes me stop higher and then my work is tighter, is a tighter gauge than it should be with a 25. So that's why I like that ours are a little bit shorter. Um, it's a preference for me. Um, okay, so I'm being asked to weigh these ASAP. So <laughs> 
Let's go ahead and turn these on. Uh, cataloger 25 yarn love says I got my pink sheep 18 millimeter today and I'm in love full disclosure I think this is my fifth pink sheep hook woohoo <laughs> all right so I think we had weighed this before we weighed this one in at 46 grams so we will weigh now this one is so I can't set this one up on here so I'm just gonna have to see if I can keep it from rolling around if we set it down this way 132 grams so there you go <laughs> weight wise we definitely still have the upper hand if you are looking for a hook that is not heavy um then i would definitely go, go with a pink sheep hook versus the um 25 millimeter that they've got right here um that is in the range of up to 140 i'm trying not to push down on it i'm just trying to hold it on there um, so anywhere from 132 to 136. Yeah, uh, that's that's a lot. I mean, and again, I think some of it too, the extra length doesn't help. Um, you know, I'll show you guys. They These look very similar to what Furls used to sell. Uh, so they used to sell a wooden version of this hook, which was actually lighter. So let's do the 20 millimeter just so you guys can see. Um, so again, our 20, 20 millimeter hooks are 32 grams. And again, ours are marked on the bottom here. So they do have a, a designation for the millimeter. Um, the 20 millimeter from Furls is 90 grams. All right. So again, definitely a heavier hook for sure. Um, and I wanted to see if it's heavier than their old hook. So this is an older wooden version of the furls and you can barely even see it was carved into the the wood but you can see that was a 20 millimeter hook here and um <laughs> the captain says that's essentially a dumbbell and i think anyone that likes those is a dumbbell oh be nice be nice okay so here's here's the wooden furls so even the wooden furls was 70 so ours was 34 um, the wooden one is 70, but again, the, the length is what gets me because I, I've just never understood the, the extra length that's added to these, these larger hooks. Cause for me, it's just not necessary. Um, you know, you're not having to use up if I held it down here, you don't need this much space for your stitches. At least I haven't found that I have, um, since I have my my hooks out, I did want to show you guys as just a couple more comparisons because I've got them here. Um, this is a, I guess it's also resin. Um, this was one of the 25 millimeter hook nook. So the hook nook hooks, um, which I got it because it's, I thought it was really pretty. I mean, it is that really pretty pink color. Um, but this one, 25 millimeter is... 116 grams. So again, much, much heavier than I can comfortably crochet with. Um, and so I know from, I got this before we started 3D printing our own hooks. So I actually did try to use this one. Um, and for me, it caused way too much pain in my wrist to use this for more than maybe five minutes. So I had to switch back and use something else. Um, so for comparison, let's see, what did I say this was again? 118. And the furls 25 is even heavier at 134. So I know immediately I would not be able to use this hook. Um, it just wouldn't, it would cause too much pain in my wrist to be able to use that, especially if the yarn is heavier. Um, so, and I can show you guys what I mean by that. Um, certain yarn is denser than others. So this is Lion Brand Vel Lux Jumbo. Um, I used this to make one of my power puff vests, as well as I'll show you guys um, the power puff mitts. So if you guys have been following me, um, the newest patterns that I just released were the power puff mitts and the power puff vest. So this is one of the mitts, um, and it was a 20 millimeter hook to make this. Um, I think 20 millimeter. I believe that's right. Um, but this is a heavier yarn. It is a denser yarn. It's a heavier yarn. So when you're making something larger, the project just gets heavier and heavier. And if your hook is heavy too, you're, you're just asking for a combination to cause hand cramps or wrist pain. 
Um, but if you're using something, at least this can help a little bit. So if you're using something like uh, Burnout Blanket Big, um, this is a, a much lighter weight blanket style yarn. So let's see if we can weigh this too. That might help a little bit. So I don't think these are the same amount, but let's see if that's 78 grams for an entire skein of it. And that's 160 just for the mitt. Okay, so you can see that's definitely a heavier yarn. Um, but that that definitely makes a difference too. But for me, it's just that would be out of the question for me to be able to use these. Uh, my other issue, this one, it was too rounded. So I think when you're working with the chunkier yarn, it helps to have a little bit of um, a little bit of an uh, of a point here at the top. Uh, and you can see these do have a little bit of a point. And like I said, they're very reminiscent of the wooden hooks that they used to sell that were like that. They definitely have more of um, a grip here. So you have more space for your yarn, which is nice. Um, this one did not have as much space underneath that hook piece for the yarn to actually, you know, hold on to. And it looks like both of these actually have a little more space, which is good. That's a good um, update. But I also feel like for me, and I'm going to try to use these for you so you can see them um, in action, but this is pretty tall for me. Like that's a wide piece. And I wanted to see, ours may be the same. I mean, I didn't completely do it. Okay, so if I go to the top here, so it's a little bit shorter. I mean, they both have the extra space to be able to come to a point at the top for sure. But this was the big, this is the big piece for me that makes a difference is that the actual shaft section of the hook down here after it decreases, um, that section is higher up. So for me, you don't have to pull your yarn down as far to get to the actual 25 millimeter section of these. Um, so let's use them because that was, was my goal was to show you guys. Um, and I will show you guys, let's see, uh, this is the other hook you may see out. So this is the 25 uh, millimeter that you can find at a lot of most, like most craft stores. So I did want to weigh that for y'all too, because this is the one before we started 3D printing hooks, uh, before I tried this one. So I found this one. I was like, I'll have to try it because it's pretty in pink. Um, this is the one that I used to use. And you can actually see where I got the captain to uh, try to uh, sand down the corners because if you can see there's not much of a groove here to catch the yarn so my yarn was always slipping out if I was trying to you know make stuff but this is all I had so I used this very very regularly so I did want to weigh this one because it's been a while since I weighed this one the captain's in here what you need it's heavy I know what do you think <laughs> <laughs> how much are these uh, I think they were $36, yeah. 78 grams. So still lighter than either this one or the furls hook. So that's why when I couldn't use this, I just jumped right back to this one because it was at least lighter than that one. And then ours again. So from 78, once we started 3D printing our own, we went from that down to 46. So that helped me a lot with getting rid of some of that pain caused by the hooks being so much heavier. Okay, so now it's time to actually use these hooks, and I wanted to show you guys. What are you sighing about? That's just a joke. Ah. That's a joke. Well, I have to see. If so you wanna, if you we supported. Money, we supported. Little money from what we produce, and pay that to a doctor when you have carpal tunnel. <laughs> Heavy bitch. Yeah, yeah. Truth. Yep. And I will say, in India, in a sweatshop. stop it. We, we will, um, our hooks are more expensive. I'll tell you that. I think these were 36. I don't think they were 40. I think they were maybe 36, $38, um, for these two hooks. I do believe they're sold out now because <laughs> I, I do feel like, you know, most of their new releases lately, they've sold out pretty quick. Um, I don't know if they're going to restock them, so I don't know if you can actually get them now. Um, but I will say they were less expensive than ours. Um, these are, like I said, $36. Our 50 millimeter hooks, I believe, are, um, what are they, 49 49 or 59 I think the 25s are $59 um, for these. But again, 
We hand make them here at our house in our basement. We hand sand them, hand resin coat them, all of those wonderful things. Um, and take your feedback into account. So a lot of our design came from getting um, feedback from you guys and making sure that we were doing whatever we needed to do to make these the, the best that they could be. Um, okay, so let's work with these a little bit. All right, and I will tell you guys, this is a 3D printer spool. If any of you guys are 3D printers and crocheters, you can easily use 3D printing spools uh, to house your extra jumbo yarn. That's been super helpful for me to find a way to um, use them uh, so we didn't have as much waste. But I'm going to tie these together because they are not here. Let's see. This was my scrap, so I definitely had a few that needed to be tied together to make sure I can use them. Okay, let's move that out of the way. All right, so let's start. Let's go ahead and start with the furls. All right, let's start with the 20 millimeter. So this is, like I said, Lion Brand Vel Lux Thick and Quick, uh, I mean Jumbo. And let me actually show you guys this yarn so you know. This is still available for sale. It's actually on clearance right now. So I'll show you guys what this looks like in on the actual skein. So this is what I'm using, Vel Lux Jumbo. It's what I used, like I said, to make these um, fingerless mitts in case you missed it. I'll show you guys. This is one of my newest patterns that just came out yesterday, but these are the power puff mittens, fingerless mittens. Uh, and I also made a power puff vest out of this yarn. Um, but I wanted to show you guys. So this is Velux jumbo, uh, jumbo yarn. It does say 19 millimeter hook. So we are almost right on the money. We're going to be using a 20 millimeter to test it out. So that's perfect for this. Um, so yeah, let's let's get to it so you guys can see. All right, so 20 millimeter hook. So immediately, I choke up on my hooks. So, um, you know, some people might hold their hooks down here. Um, not me. I think that's that's the one thing where if you do if you do tend to hold your hooks lower, you may want the extra length on these. I haven't particularly had anyone who has told me that they do. So if you're here and in the comments and you hold your if you've used a jumbo hook like this and you hold it down here, let me know because that's great feedback for us. Um, I choke up on my hooks. So if I'm using my hook, I'm going to hold it way up here. I want to feel like I'm in control of the yarn. I want it right next to the edge of the hook. So for me, that means I'm already bottom heavy because I'm holding up here and the rest of it is just kind of weighing down in my hand. So let's do a square. I mean, a, a swatch. It is smooth. I mean, it is resin, so it's it's a it's a smooth, um, it's a smooth to work through the yarn. Okay. All right. But if you can see where I'm holding my yarn, this yarn is never making it all the way down to the point that's 25 millimeters. So if I'm stopping my stitches here, they're not going to be the correct gauge. So let me see if I can actually, if I do, I'm going to do single crochet stitches for the first row so you guys can see. I'm going to try to force my stitches all the way down past this section of the hook. All right. So that's going to mean, let's see if I can even do this. All right. So I'm going to push it all the way down. Yeah, so that's definitely not going to be as natural for me to have to push my yarn that far down the hook because I'm having to hold it a lot lower. And I think some of it is when you're working with chunkier yarn, I have the tendency to want to control the stitches with my finger. So I try to like pull it down and I don't know if that's just something I learned, you know, when I was first starting to crochet. Um, but you definitely are going to have to work your stitches way down to make sure that you get the right gauge, or you're probably going to have a tighter gauge than you should if you're stopping too early. So you're going to want to make sure you get that all the way down past that section. Now for single crochet, it's not as bad because you're not having to, um, yarn over much. So let's try half double crochet and see where we get with that. 
All right. So automatically with half double, I feel like I need to pull my yarn back up to yarn over, but I'm going to try to keep it down here. So let's do that. See, and there's no way to do that. So if I keep my yarn down here, I can't actually get the hook into the stitch. So I'm going to have to move it up, which is going to stop me a little early to push that through. And then I'm going to have to push them all the way down. There we go. I'm going to have to come back up again. Whoop, had my knot there. That's why that was hard to get through. There we go. So we'll do one row of half double. And if y'all have questions about these, please feel free to pop them in the comments. Um, if there's anything that you want me to show you with these, I'm going to work a couple more rows, um, at least this row with this one, and I'm going to switch to one of our hooks so you can see the difference. Now keep in mind, these are not ergonomic. There's no um, additional kind of ergonomicness to the handle, which I think is pretty common. Once the hooks get this big, um, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to add width to the handle. So most of these are going to be straight. Ours are as well. Um, so that's why I feel like the ergonomicness it, for these larger hooks is going to come from the weight, uh, at least for me. All right. There we go. Okay. So that's what we're looking like. That's one row of single crochet and half double crochet using the furls. So let's do the same thing with a pink sheep hook. I'm actually going to start a new one for this one so you guys can see the whole thing. And if you're just joining in, we are comparing Furl's new jumbo hooks. These are their resin hooks that they just came out with uh, to our very own 3D printed crochet hooks uh, by Pink Sheep Design. Uh, so you guys can see the difference. I just got done doing a small starter swatch with the Furl's 20 millimeter hook right here. And I'm about to do the same thing with... Uh, the 20 millimeter pink sheep design hook so you guys can see this this will be on our feed when we get done uh, when I get done with this so if you missed any of it and you want to watch the whole thing um, we did weigh these out at the beginning so you can see what the weight of each of these hooks are um, this was an old furls hook and this is the 25 millimeter hook nook crochet hook so I added that in as well as just to compare and contrast from what's out there um, and available for purchase so this is our one of our 20, 20 millimeter, again, marked on the bottom here, 20 millimeter crochet hooks. So let's do, how many did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did eight. So let's do a chain of nine. So immediately for me, again, I like to hold higher up on my hooks. This allows me to do it because this is a lot shorter. This section is a lot shorter, so I'm not having to push my hook way up here, which again, I couldn't because ours are shorter. They're really meant for that. So like I said, unless you prefer to hold hooks way down here, even these jumbo ones, then the extra length is not gonna do very much to help you. All right, so let's do, whoops. There we go. A chain. I feel like I, I feel like that slipped because I was having to pull so hard to get this one through through the stitches. It's smooth on there, but again, it's it's bulkier and heavier. So um, I'm not having to try as hard with ours to get it um, pulled through. And you may see that difference in me working with it. Um, okay, that should be enough. So let's work a row of single crochet. And again, I can stay nice and close to the top of my hook because I'm able to just pop it right over that section and get it to the part of the hook that's actually 25 or 20 millimeters, not 25. We're not working with those yet. There we go. And for me personally, I mean, and again, our hooks were designed for me. I mean, I was the one trying to solve my own problems with jumbo hooks and make them easier for me to use since that is the type of yarn that I like to use the most. Um, and I do need to tie this to a new strand. Let's get us a, a new one started. Oh, that's a really short one. So as you can tell, this was holding my scraps. So I had some pretty short sections on there. 
Let's tie this together so we can keep moving. There we go. Oh, I don't know how long that one will stay. Yeah, that one's not tied tight enough. Um, quick tip, if you're using jumbo yarn like this and it's not, if you tie it in a knot and you pull and it just slips open, what I like to do is I wrap it once and then I wrap it again. So I wrap it twice and then the second portion of the knot, then you usually only have to wrap it once and then you can pull it nice and tight and it's not gonna come undone. So that's what I tend to do. The knot might be a teeny bit bulkier, but I'd rather it be bulkier than it come undone. So um, that's how I do that. Okay, so let's do a row of half double crochet because that's what I did with the last one. All right. Yeah, for me, um, these hooks were exactly what I needed. Uh, just being lighter weight, being streamlined. Um, both of these hooks, both ours and furls, are considered in line. Uh, and that is because, as you can see, the edge of the hook is right in line with the body of the hook, which you can see with theirs as well. But for me, ours feel more streamlined than theirs. So to me, this feels super bulky. And I felt that trying to work with it. Um, it's just, you know, I, I grab one of these and I feel much, feel much better. <laughs> but again, we designed them. I designed them for that reason. You know, we had quite a few um, variations that we had to try first before we got it right. Um, but this ended up being the winner. So there we go. All right. So let's look at these two. All right, side by side. This one is actually bigger. And I think a lot of that was me having to push that hook in further, pull it out further, and trying to make sure that I was further down on the hook versus this one where it was just a little more natural for me. I wasn't having to move the hook around as much. I just did my stitches. Um, so for me, that led to tighter stitches. I naturally have a tighter tension as a crocheter. Um, so the fact that the other one was looser means I wasn't as accustomed to the hook. So it was a little bit more difficult for me to just naturally do that. So that led to the wider gauge here on this one versus um, our pink sheep hooks. So you can see that here. We've got this extra on the side. Okay. All right. So what I wanted to do for the 25 millimeter is, um, and I'm actually going to move this back a little bit because I'm leaning forward to crochet and that is causing its own issues. There we go. That way I can be a little bit closer to myself. And I'll tell you, most of that is because when I was using this one, it already felt heavy. <laughs> so that causes for me, that'll lead to shoulder pain, not just wrist pain, not just hand cramping, but I'll get shoulder and back pain if I'm not careful, if my hooks are too heavy. Um, so I have to make sure that I'm careful about that. Um, so we're going to use this one and see how it goes. <laughs> Even though it's the heaviest hook I own, I think. Um, I can't remember. Let's Let's see can't remember which one was heavier so we'll measure the hook nook one because this one was the heaviest hook I owned was the hook nook hook um so let's put that one on there 118 okay and then this new furls these are both 25 millimeters this new furls one is 130 so this is even heavier than the heaviest one I owned <laughs> so this is gonna be fun this is gonna be a fun one to try to use okay I feel like I need to do some stretches before I get going on this one. All right, so let's do, and this is, um, uh, this is actually a Mainstays brand. I'll show you guys which yarn this is so you guys can see, but it is very similar to a couple of other yarns. Any super jumbo blanket yarn, this is exactly what this one is that I'm using. This is the Walmart version of Chanel Chunky Yarn. It's a Mainstays yarn. Um, they categorize it as a, as a size six. It is not a size six. If you get a yarn that recommends a 25 millimeter crochet hook, it's a size seven. So 
Walmart's lying to you. <laughs> um, do not buy this yarn for a project that calls for super bulky yarn. Um, it, it recommends a 25 millimeter hook. Uh, but that's what this is. But it's very, very similar to um, like this chubby Chanel that was a limited time yarn by Loops and Threads. This is Michael's brand. Um, they do actually categorize it as a seven size seven. It also recommends a 25 millimeter crochet hook. Um, this is also similar to the, um, uh, what is it called? Joanne has one that's, I think, big like Teddy Bear or Big Teddy or something like that. They've got one similar to this. And then Bernat Blanket Big, I believe, is the name of it. Um, there's also a Bernat Blanket Extra that's like just a little bit smaller than this, which is great for the 20 millimeter. But this is what I'm going to be using, these this kind, for the 25 millimeter test. Okay, so let's get going. All right, and let me give myself a little more. I don't know if I'm going to go through this whole little mini skein doing this because um, this yarn doesn't go super far. All right, so I'm going to do my slip knot. Let's get this big guy going. All right, again, I'm trying to hold way higher than I should because I'm supposed to be getting my yarn down here with a section that's actually 25 millimeters. So that's going to be uh, the first difficulty for me. And at least that's the other thing. So even though this one is too heavy for me to use, at least it did end higher. So for me, that was a big plus on this one is that I didn't have to hold my hook way down here to try to get it past this section. Um, and let's compare that to this one too. I think this one, see, this is similar to this one. So even though I used this one heavily, I seriously doubt that I ever got it over <laughs> past this part. I was probably working closer to this section. So, you know, who knows if my work was truly on gauge or not. Um, but that's what I dealt with. So it's very similar to the one you'd find at a craft store like a Joann's or a Michael's. This is the 25 millimeter that you'll usually find. Okay, so let's get it going. Oh, immediately, a little difficult, something to get used to. Like I said, the head of this one is pretty bulky. So let's do a couple of stitches. All right, so there we are. Got a couple stitches here. Um, let's actually move, remove one. Oh, goodness. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to use just single crochet again for the first one. First row, single crochet. Oh, goodness. See, I'm having trouble because I can't figure out where to hold this hook. There we go. All right, so that's not too bad. And the, the first row is always the most difficult, I think, when you're using the um, super jumbo yarn because um, there's not much to hold on to. There we go. Y'all, my shoulder's already feeling it. It was already feeling it from the 20. And now I'm using the 25, so we're hanging in there for science. <laughs> it's for research, y'all. All right, there we go. So that is row one. There we go. Let's do row two. So we turn. And I'm going to again do half double crochet with this yarn, which honestly I don't ever really recommend half double crochet with this yarn anyway because it's already so bulky. Uh, but since that's what I did with those, we're going to do that with both, with both of these hooks. So let's push that through. Okay, it's kind of hard to pull those through, but again, this is half double crochet, so I may have the same issues with my, uh, with my hook. We'll see. Okay. And again, if you have any questions about these hooks or our hooks, um, please feel free to pop them in the chat or in the question box, and I'll be happy to answer while we're going through these. All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, almost done. There we are. All right. So that is the furls 25 millimeter. That is what the swatch looks like. That's just a knot. So <laughs> it's one of the knots. 
All right, so we've got that. And I'm gonna use, let me see if I have one more of these so I can use a different yarn. Okay, I do. All right, so I've got this one that's the same yarn, just a different color. So we're gonna use this one. I should have enough to do another swatch just like that. We'll see. Okay, I'm feeling it right now, um, right in here. So I don't know where you guys tend to get your pain, but it's almost traveling up the upper part of my arm, which I'll tell you, um, you know, if you look at my Power Puff vest, which is a huge piece, um, that was actually the two posts ago. So if you look two reels ago for my announcement that it was live, um, the pink one, that's a bunch of colors. This it's this color, pink, orange, and green. Um, this is a big project. So I'm used to using this size of hook. I'm used to using a 20 and a 25 millimeter hook without having pain, but right now I can feel it right here. So it's kind of like shooting up the top of my wrist, um, which to me, because that's what happened when I bought this is because of the weight of the hook. So let's move to um, our 25 millimeter. So you can see this is our 25 millimeter hook. Um, and we are going to do the same thing so you guys can see the difference. And let me know if you guys enjoy this kind of review because, you know, I definitely wanted to compare and contrast some of the other hooks that are out there. Like this is um, a 20 millimeter that you can buy on Amazon. Um, so looking into some of the other hooks that are out there, let me know if you'd like to see more reviews like this where we do a compare and contrast, especially with the bigger hooks that are out there because there aren't as many options. So, you know, most of you guys have probably seen all of these hooks. Like you may not have seen the furls one because this one, like I said, they don't make this one anymore. Um, these are already sold out, but you may have seen them. If you follow them, they just released them. Um, and the hook nook has been pretty popular. So, you know, I like to look into the ones that are kind of easy to purchase and, you know, that are available so that you guys can see the difference. So let me know, let me know if you think this is helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and do, oh, and I'm back to being comfortable. <laughs> All right, so obviously for me, and some of it may just be me being used to these hooks, but for me, um, that feels a lot more natural. It's a lot easier um, for me to work my stitches. And again, the first row is always a little more difficult because like I said, you don't have as much to hang on to um, as you're working into that first chain. But I like feeling like I can hold my hook a lot higher and I don't have anything weighing me down. All right, so that is row number one done. Again, it's almost impossible to see stitches with this yarn, uh, but I wanted to make sure I used the same type of yarn for these two. Both of these yarns are the mainstays uh, Chanel, which is the Walmart version um, of a super chunky or a jumbo, a jumbo size, jumbo Chanel. All right, so I'm going to do a row of half double crochet to finish this out, um, which you've got to kind of feel for your stitches here. I think a lot of it, the darker yarn is definitely more difficult to, um, to see. And see, even this one, you know, when you can't see your yarn, it can be difficult to pull through. And that's, again, I just don't super recommend using half double crochet stitches with this kind of jumbo yarn in general, um, just because it's already so chunky. And you don't really want to use up a ton of yarn because it's, oh, it's also more expensive. So, all right. Oh, yeah, I couldn't even see that one. There we go. All right, so that is ours versus the furls. And let me see if I, I should have a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, these are the same. So again, just like before, the furls swatch ended up being wider than mine because for me, I'm having to make larger movements with this hook to get it through the yarn. 
So that ends up loosening up my gauge. Whereas with this one, I can keep my tension tight. I can keep it just how, what, you know, what feels natural to me. Um, but that is the difference between these two. And if we look again, this was the 20 millimeter difference. So we had the furls 20 millimeter swatch and then the pink sheep design 20 millimeter swatch here on the bottom. Same thing, single crochet first row, half double crochet second row. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, like I said, these are ours versus these new furls hooks. And again, I think they might still have a 30 millimeter in stock, but I'm pretty sure they're already sold out of their 20 and 25s. I don't know if they're going to restock them or not. Um, we currently have stock. So if you're interested in a lighter weight, 20, we have 19 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 25. Um, all of those are in stock now. And then we also make all the sizes. So we, we make everything, um, in this style, so our 3D printed style, we make everything from an eight millimeter all the way up to a 35 um, and pretty much everything in between. Right now we have, uh, I think right now we have every size in stock. So I think we have everything between an eight and a 35. Um, I don't think we have any sizes between 25 and 35. So I think it goes from 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 35 is what we have. So there's these two and I will show you guys. So just in case if you've joined in and you have not seen our hooks before, I'll show you guys some of our smaller sizes. You can see them. Let's see if I can find, here's an eight millimeter. So this is one of our eight millimeters. You know, you can, guys can see they're all modeled after the same design. So I try not to have too long um, of a hook portion here. I try to have enough space inside the hook to really grab the yarn so you're not going to slip yarn out when you're doing your stitches. Um, and they're really meant to fit in your hand here. So again, if you're someone who holds your hook way down here, then ours might not be the right fit for you. You know, so this is really made for someone who wants to hold higher up or for someone who holds with a pencil grip. We do have quite a few pencil grippers that have told us our hooks work great for them. So that's the feedback we're looking for. Um, but that is one of our eight millimeters. And Ola Joe, thank you. The Power Puff, the Power Puff collection is growing. <laughs> Um, this is one of our 10 millimeters. So you can see again, all of them are marked on the bottom. So that's one of our 10 millimeter hooks um, that we have got. This was our newest colorway. This is our mermaid colorway uh, that we have in stock right now. We will have new hooks releasing at the end of this month. So we'll have a new colorway that releases in all the different sizes. Um, and then for those of you who need ergonomic hooks um, and don't use jumbo yarn. So if you don't use, if you use, um, if you don't even go up to a 10 millimeter, so maybe, maybe this eight millimeter is kind of pushing it for you. Maybe, you, you know, there's, you don't have projects that call for such large hooks, um, which for me is funny to hear because this is probably one of the smallest hooks that I use. Um, but this year we did start making, um, there we go. We did start making hybrid hooks. So if you guys have seen ergonomic handles, we decided to create our own line of what we call our hybrids. So these are actually, um, let's see if this will focus. It's probably not going to, there we go. Kind of, kind of focus. Um, these are, in, are kind of, I say glued in, but they're actually uh, secured in with resin before we coat them. Um, and this is a six millimeter that we've got here. So same style. Um, plenty of room for your stitches here. And then we also go down to pretty small sizes. This is a 2.5 that we've got with our, um, with our ergonomic handles. And then we do have a little bit of crossover. And I did this because we don't recommend using our 3D printed hooks like this for things like amigurumi. They are still a type of plastic. So, you know, we try to make them nice and strong, but we don't recommend putting a ton of torque on them. So like, let's say you're making a super tightly stitched basket with t-shirt yarn. I wouldn't go with our um, smaller 3D printed hooks, but we have crossover because of these hybrids. I'll show you guys. Um, we have got this is an eight, but this is a nine millimeter. Let's see if I can find the eight. Here it is. Yeah, so this is our eight millimeter hybrid hook 
versus our eight millimeter um, 3D printed hook. And the reason we did that is because these are fantastic for amigurumi, baskets, um, purses, things where you're going to need the tension to be a lot tighter because this hook goes all the way down through the handle. Okay, so we don't have to actually, we don't have to cut our hooks off here. It actually goes all the way down through making these super, super strong. So that's really nice. So we have crossover from eight millimeter up to 10. So this is one of our 10 millimeter hybrids, which these get heavier. So, you know, I'm not going to try to tell you that these are the lightest weight hooks in the business because the metal hooks are already heavy. Um, heavier because they're metal and then obviously coating them with resin. So let's do a quick check. Let's see, and I'll show you guys because this is our, these are our super lightweight 10 millimeter hooks. So these are actually only 16 grams, 14 grams, between 14 and 16. All right. And then our hybrid is all the way up to 46. So again, these are going to be heavier hooks, but you know, it's a trade-off because they're a workhorse. So if you're really going to have to be tightening those stitches up, you would probably want a metal hook anyway. Um, so that's what we have there. But if you need the lighter weight, you're doing something that doesn't require you to have such a tight tension. It's nice to have those options. So we have a crossover from eight millimeter, nine millimeter and 10 millimeter if you needed an option. So, like I said, thank you guys so much for joining in on the review today. I will definitely look into doing more reviews like this so you guys can see a compare and contrast, um, especially if you're on the fence and you're not really sure if a hook is right for you to purchase from other companies. Um, you know, it's a great way for me to have the best of both worlds. I can still share our hooks with you guys, but I can share other hooks with you too so you guys can see what's out there and, and find the right fit for you. Um, so thank you guys for joining in. This will be available here on my YouTube, I mean, here on my Instagram channel. So if you have just joined in and you want to watch the whole thing, it'll be available to watch in just a few minutes. Um, and then if you prefer to watch videos on YouTube, this will be uploaded to YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow. Um, so if you subscribe over there, you'll get a notification once this one's uploaded and you can watch it over there. So thank you guys so much. And until next time, happy hooking.